What is Red Tone? Well, as a company, it was established in 1996 before subsequently joining the Ace Market in 2004, as well as actually becoming a subsidiary of the famous Bajaya Corporation for HUD in the late 2010s. As well as this company actually received over 39 local and international accolades across the globe, right? And it's also the first uh, multimedia super corridor company to re receive R&D grants from the Malaysian government. How about its services? Well, Red Tone actually has three distinct services. First of all, it will be telecommunication services where they diverge into government security, as well as preparing communications amongst businesses and governments alike through their voice networks. The second would be managed telecommunications network services, whereby they construct, they maintain, as well as they operate all the remote mobile base stations throughout Malaysia, as well as preparing simple Wi-Fi and fiber infrastructures to boost the business standing. And finally, industry digital services, whereby to follow the dig digital trend of Industry 4.0, they are also interested into Internet of Things, virtual reality, VR, as well as cloud services via their PBX cloud. However, as with all corporations alike, even Redtone actually shares its fair share of problems as well as challenges. The first would actually be lackluster tax savvy mindsets, whereby although they have a low turnover rate of 1% in terms of their employees, it actually ironically lowers their capability to grow and hire new talents, which would be new blood, into their organization. Secondly, it would be that thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic and that is still ongoing even to today, Rayton's personnel has actually been less engaging as well as they are complaining about the lack of bonding within the company as they were forced to attend a more virtual meetings rather than physical ones. And lastly, they are actually unable to act on their own accord as the centralization concept relates to Rick Tone, whereby some and certain of the HR policies are actually manhandled by the Bajaya Group. Under the Discussions and Implications section, we analyze Red Tone's HR department based on the exploration of two HR-related areas. Those are Human Resource Management Evolution and the Human Resource Management Function, Talent Management. When it comes to the evolution of Redstone's HR department, using this human resource evolutionary model, we observed in the past that the department was in the personnel management stage, where they mainly process letters and handle all employee issues with little emphasis on hosting in-house employee-related programs. They were also highly administrative focused. At present, the department appears to be in the strategic HRM stage where hosting of in-house employee-related programs were done more often. They were empowering non-HR managers to handle subordinate issues themselves, therefore taking more advisory roles, and they've become more strategically focused. So while there appears to be a positive evolution, our observation also appears to show that Red Tone's HR department is still retaining minor aspects of the personnel management stage. And these aspects include a sizable amount of administrative work that still exists and the lack of investment into automated tools. Aspect one seems to stem from the immense paperwork still being done in Red Tone's HR department. Based on our observation, the paperwork seems to be stemming from the recruitment processes such as CV shortlisting and screening, which appear to be using little automation tools while Aspect 2 seems to stem from Red Tone's low candidate application rate. Now, the observation of this aspect led us to understand that lesser automation leads to more administrative work processes being done that should have been automated. It is best to note that in 2020, COVID-19 Malaysia caused graduate unemployment rate to increase by 22.5%, leading to lessened job openings and increased job competition, which indicates that there is a growing reliance on efficient automated technology to cater to increasing candidates. Furthermore, it is important to note that limited technology slows recruitment processes from the internal decision making to engagements between recruiters and candidates. So in the end, Redtone will continue to have minor aspects of personal management in their practices if they continue to cope with sizable administrative works and having a lack of investment into automated tools. As for the HRM talent management section, Redtone utilizes a multi-level onboarding model for new employees. In the compliance stage, Redtone discusses the organizational structure, HR policies, describing the workers' code of conduct and administers the paperwork. In the culture and connection stage, younger employees are given workplace tours and introduced to senior co-workers. New hires are welcome to lunch with the HOD and co-workers. The following day, HR arranges a session for all HODs to discuss Redtone's goods and services to newer employees. Therefore, Redtone uses socializing as a person environment suitability strategy, but lacks sufficient room for self-initiated contact between new employees and your colleagues. Socialization activities may drive recruits to, pres to present an alter ego where they project a facade. Redtone should balance their onboarding approach by enabling new employees to freely interact without mandatory socialization efforts. Moving on to the training and HR development, Redtone aims to diversify their employee skill set by organizing development programs such as virtual or physical courses, and every employee is entitled to 40 hours of training per year. By doing so, the company is able to mitigate training gaps and allow hires to follow as their own learning space. Redtone also believes in two-way communication methods to understand an employee's technical competency level. Lastly, Redtone adopts job rotation by training their employees to learn recruitment, thus improving their versatility. Job rotation also allows employees to develop their skills as they work in different environments, which aligns with the six HRM elements displayed in the diagram below that develops employees in organization. 
Upon employees' completion of their 40-hour learning and development courses, their performance will be individually scaled by the HR department alongside proper evidence. The company adopts a point system whereby employee training development is measured from a scale of 0 to 5. Moreover, Redtone HR department segregates their appraisal sessions, an informal mid-year review, and an official year-end review. The mid-year review engages employees with their superiors to discuss their goals and helps them to stay on track. And while the final year review officializes each employee's KPI scaling and each department's overall KPI itself. Redtone has weaknesses in their performance management style, whereby their department lacks digitalization approaches, which lowers their organizational competence should they intend to adopt a strategic and a sustainable HRM approach. As COVID-19 has shifted trends to a more digitalized business environment, this renders traditional practices such as hard copy KPI forms obsolete. As for the first concern over the lack of qualified personnel employed in the HR of Red Tone, theoretically, the elitist theory solely addresses that the talent of high-performing personnel who are distinguished by their added value to the firm convey that a person possesses a high degree of critical competencies for the firm and can make a significant contribution to its growth. They can be considered as talent. On this basis, the pursuit of postgraduate degrees, advanced diplomas, or even careers in research are pivotal for the HR personnel in the present commercial scenario, as on-the-job training is not sufficient for the competitive industry. In this regard, Redtone can evaluate and offer company scholarships for their most valued employees to pursue qualification with its own research and funding. Studies have provided that blockchain technology with its seamless data transfer, but no data manipulation allows effective employee evaluation with transparency and integrity. Over to the next concern, which is overlooked post-pandemic cultural shock. Research shows that Red Tone's employee culture has dwindled following the COVID-19 pandemic, which poses a problem to the department. The self-interest theory, however, provides that an employee's desire to achieve the best outcome possible for themselves. Employees can experience uncertainty, uncertainty during these times, which are viewed as arbitrary and unpredictable. Although motivation and leadership may have an interconnected influence with the performance of an employee, the organizational culture accepted by the employees will directly influence uh, their performance, as shown in the diagram and our research, in line with the self-interest theory and the discussions above. Redtone should carry out an annual in-depth research to study the components of the culture resulting from the cultural shocks. Coming to the last section of the presentation, Redtone's call to action. Essentially, there are two short-term solutions that Redtone can follow in the meantime. Firstly, as administrative work can be repetitive to a certain extent, Redtone can slowly start with automating a single task at a time. Secondly, as appreciating organizational culture is no longer sufficient, the only way is to look up trends to study about the patterns, dying culture in the workplace, as well as the recent ones. For now, Redtone can start with doing monthly gathering sessions to evaluate feedback. So, that's it for our presentation. We finally come to an end. Before we leave, we would like to thank Redtone for accepting the interview as well as supporting our research. Thank you for listening.